Hey guys, welcome to the 17th day of this YouTube mentorship. Um, we have been on for the last um for the last 16 days, and today we are going to talk about a very important concept. Right? Um, we're talking about um okay, we're going to talk about um the fair value gaps. Right, it's a very important topic and something that I use, you know, to leverage my trading. All right, so let's talk about fair value gaps. All right, some people call it, um, you know, there are several names for it. I right? several different names for this. Right, so some people call it, um, let me use this on from twenty two. All right, some people call it um fair value gaps. So if that's FVG, you know, fair value gaps. Some people call it um, imbalance, right? Some people call it IPA. So that they are all the same thing. So, so we have imbalance, we have fair value gaps, and we have what IPA. So they all refer to the same thing, right? So they all refer to the same thing, right? So fair value gaps, ICT, um, fair value gaps, imbalance, IPA, they are still the same thing, right? This is a very, very important concept. If you understand this, um, it can be a very, very good trading um, um, system. Now, this fair value gap, right? The act as what higher time frame point of interest, that's POI. That means if you're looking for a trade on the higher time frame, you can use fair value gap as a POI, right? So they, call, they also act as what lower time frame entries. So you can use your fair value gap for your entry. So LTF entry. So this is serves two ways. So you can use um, a fair value gap for your PY, that is your setup, your trade setup. You can use it also as your entry criteria, right? Give me a moment. All right. So we have to plug in my laptop. So, um, so we have um, we use it as higher time frame PY, and also as lower as lower time frame entry. That is what fair value gaps do right there are two there are two way right either fair value gaps or so either um poi or entry right and that's the way they are used right so now um regardless of what we call it we have to understand that these are the three these are the things that different as fair value gaps now fair value gaps are divided into two right so we have what the bullish right Bullish favor leg up, and that was the bearish favor leg ups. And I divided to two, those are the divisions, right? So we have two the bullish favor leg up, and what the bearish favor leg up, right? And then let's add one, one other one. So they was all the inverted favor leg up, but there are three, right? Three types. So either it's bullish, is bearish, or what is inverted, right? So let's talk about it now. A favor leg up is. Identified by three candles, right? So we usually see what three candles are form was a favor leg up, right? So these three candles are always side by side, and then these candles have weeks. So you have what's your upper week, and then we have what's your lower week. This is candle one. So the first candle, candle one. Then we have the second one here, which is what candle two. This is the upper week. So I'm, I'm not going to be perfect. So I'm not going to the most drawing week. So I'm not trying to be, have a perfect week, so I'm not drawing it just for drawing sake, right? So if you look at your candles, you'll see it's a, it's a perfect um, symmetry, right? So we have candle three. So candle three. All right. So this is what we call effect as a favor leg up. Now the distance, you know, in this candle now, look at look very carefully. We see that. We see that in this three candle formation. There's a distance, there's a space here, right? The last buy order was here. The market bought to this week and then we dropped. That means between this week and this week, we had only sales because market this, this was the last week the market bought. The market bought here, understand this. The market bought here and pushed up. And then the, the next buy we can find is what? From here. The market bought again from here up toward this week. So you can see that the market bought from this point to this week, right? Can we see that? Market bought from this week to this week, 
but from this week to this week. That means that there is a space where there is no buy, right? The market bought from this week to this week, bought from this week to this week. So there is a place where there are no buys, and the, that space is what the distance between what this week and this week. So this distance where there is that there is no buy, right? We refer to that as what the fair value gap, right? So you can use a tool to highlight as a fair value gap. So you can, I can bring it. This is a tool I use to highlight the fair value gap. I use them this parallel channel, right? So I also simply draw from here to this point. So what does that is our fair value gap? So we have gotten our fair value gap, right? This is what we compare as a fair value gap. The distance between the week week one and week three, right? So this is week. This is candle kind of one. That's candle kind of one. Right, this candle one, and this candle two, and then this is candle three. All right, so the the the, the distance between the week of candle one and candle three that that's what we get as what a favorable gap. Now in this case, this is what a bearish favorable gap. Why? Because the market is bearish. So whenever a favorable gap is looking like this, and then you're expecting price to maybe open and then push to the what that gap. Right, so price will you know, maybe push into this gap, right? This was referred to as what a bearish gap. So you expect market to push into this gap, right? And then and let me add something here. So this gap also added was a draw on liquidity, right? They also add us a draw on liquidity, right? Which can be used as what targets, right? So that is draw on liquidity as right? targets, liquidity targets. So you can put in bracket targets. So that's where we set price to go to. So you can use, these are the three ways you use for gap as a POI, right? As a, an entry and also as a target size, so higher time frame targets, draw liquidity where price should draw towards, right? So that you can use as a, as a take profit or where you expect price to go to, right? So this was the first result. This, uh, this is a bearish example, right? Bearish, right? So this is a, this is a bearish favor gap, right? It's kind of like what's kind of one, can be two, can be three. This gap in between the asset price will hit there and then what rejects. All right, that was referred to as what a fair value gap. Now let's look at the, a bullish example. So bullish example is also the reverse, right? So you have candle one, candle two, and candle three, right? So we have candle one, you see candle one, candle two, candle three. So for a bullish example, just the reverse, right? It's just the reverse of what we did there. So that means when the market is bullish, we want price to retrace into the fair value gap and then rejects from it. Right? That's the best, basically what we do. In a bullish favor leg up. So one price to come back into the favor leg up and do what push higher. So once price goes below the low of candle three, then we are what in a bullish favor. Leg up. Once price goes below candle three is low, we're in a bullish favor leg up, right? So once price also goes below this low, we have hit the favor leg up, right? So this is a bullish example of a fair value gap, right? So now for inverted gaps, inverted gaps occur when price breaks a favor leg up. Now, what do I mean? This assumes that okay. The market was able to break our favorable gap. Maybe we surprise buy above this, you know, buy above the favorable gap. This was called inverted favorable gaps now. So let's type it inverted, right? So brackets broke or breached your gap, right? So market was able to break above, and right? so can those buy above it. Now, this favorable gap cannot be used as what an inverted gap if as a bullish um, setup. I mean, the market can come back into the gap. And weak into the gap. I mean, I see price come back to tap into that old favorable gap, right? So this was the figure as inverted market was, it was initially it was what a an inverted gap. So it was a, it was a bearish favorable gap. Then price was able to break above it, and maybe the market's rock chart changed to be bullish, right? So price can you know come back to tap into your your gap, your favorable gap, and then what? This not because it was a bullish PUI. That means when a favorable gap is broken. To the upside and the market is bullish based on structure right and there's a reason market should go higher why right? that gap can add as what a bullish inverted favor gap right it's called it ip um if so this is how we call it we call it i i f v g so that means inverted favor gap right that means it was once bearish but now is bullish right because that was inverted fair value gap the market the gap was bullish before now it's bearish or bearish before now it's bullish and it also the reverse in the market was bullish and then it breaks the fair value gap right you can see price come back to tap into it that makes it was an inverted fair value gap right 
So once it's inverted, that means what goes up comes down. It's not. Like, it's like a support. It's like a broken resistance turned support or a broken support turned resistance. Um, please, if you have not gone through the previous videos, do have to go through them. And also, do as you're watching this video at this moment, just do have to click on the subscribe button so that you can get more from me in the subsequent future, right? We are, we are, this is just day 17. We'll see after 10 more days to go, right? So, do us do have to like this video, subscribe to the channel so that I can know that you're, you're, you're being impacted by what we are doing here, right? So, that is this, by the way. Now, let's look at chat examples. Now, let me just discuss before we look at chat examples, let me just quickly discuss something very important here, right? So now we have understood the three kind of fair value gaps, right? Now let's um let's now talk about this three. This thing I talk about now. I told you guys that fair value gaps act as high time point of interest, lower time entry, and then draw liquidity, right? That means that for a higher time PY, that means if the market is bullish, right, you can use your fair value gap as a point of interest. That means if there's a gap in this bullish range now. If there's a bullish fair value gap in this range, right? You can use that as your your end your your POI. That means once price comes there, you can look for what trade opportunities. When market comes to your fair value gap, you can look for what bullish trade opportunities inside the gap, right? Once price hit the gap, you can look out for what bullish opportunities, right? Also, the same thing too. If market comes to your POI and then maybe there's a what if make a maybe a, a market store shift. Right, a, a bullish confirmation, like it's a lower time frame market structure break, right? So you cannot use the gap on the lower time frame for your entry. So you cannot use it as your entry. Like you can use your you can use your, your gap as your entry. Right, you can use your gap as your entry. And as price comes, there bounces on the gap, and then you can use it as your buy entry, right? So that's what I mean. Then for targets, that means you can I will explain that with a higher time frame. Let me just go to a higher time frame and just explain this with a higher time frame. I think I, there's, a, there's a, a trade I caught on GBPUSD, right? I, I caught a trade on GBPUSD. That was some days back, right? So I think it was on 15 minutes time frame. Why is that trade now? Okay, I've seen it. All right, so this was the trade there. So in this market, there, there was some um, news, right? So we had this gap between here. We had a family gap, kind of big gap, you know, kind of big gap between here and there, right? And someone will be asking me, so why are you using that kind of self kind of one? Now let me explain something unique. Right? Things are deeper than they seem. Now look at this candle very carefully. Notice that this candle, this small candle was inside this candle, right? So we are we are going to be using this other one. Right. Now, the reason why I use this candle is because in the February gap. The candle two must not be higher than candle one. Now, if you look at this candle, you can see that candle two went above the previous candle. That means it's weak above it. For a February gap to be valid, the candle one must be what? Must be higher than candle two. If candle two is higher than candle one, then use the candle before it. So in this case, now we're not using this candle. You're not using this candle though, because this candle pushed above the previous candle. So you see what? The highest candle for candle one, the candle two is the candle with the imbalance, right? So that's why we use them. We use this one and not this one because this one the is higher than what this one, but this one is not higher than this one. So you have to use the candle as higher than what this. So this candle went above the previous candle. So that means this candle is not invalid. You cannot use it as a favorable gap below. You have to use the one that's higher than what candle two, right? Remember how I high level this candle one, two, and three. So now we had our favorable gap here. So this high, I call this buy here. Right, so I said there was a PUI here. I bought GPUs inside this place, and I was targeting what this fair value gap might take profit because price is going to draw for what this gap. So I saw this big gap as what well, where price should grow from. But I told you that fair value gaps can be used as what draw liquidity so targets. So I was buying inside here, and I was targeting what this gap as my take profit because what fair value gap others what take profit, right? So that's what I bought here. TP at this. And there was market, you can say market reversed, right? Music price hits it. You can say market said what reversing. But can you see that the market was, was buying very smoothly until he hit this gap? You can say the market hit this gap. Can you see how the market is stalling? You can see this doji can do. You can see how the market is slowing down because of what that is what an area was that is an area of what resistance. Right, so let's, let's look at more examples now. Let's look at uh, um, fair value gaps. 
All right. So look at this. Look at this very good example here. So, so we have our favorite gap here. Where between what? This candle. So let's go forward. All right. So we have a very good gap here between this gap. See this between this and this. So we had a, a very good favorite gap here. All right. So imagine you are buying down here. If you are buying down here, your targets would have been what this favorite gap. So if you are buying down here, you have been targeting this gap as your 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 your, your, your target. So if you are buying anywhere inside, there, maybe down here, or whatever, I'm targeting this gap as your, as your target because what gaps are drawn a bit. And, and you can see as market hits here, can you see how it's rejected very nicely? So if you maybe if you sold inside this gap, you have you have maybe taken this loss or take profit. Maybe if you bought sold inside there, you have targeting what this swing, this um short term low for your think TP. If you sold here, targeting was decided, and we should have used a lower time frame, right? Now, can you see that as this gap broke? Can you see what happened? Can you see how price came back to bounce again inside it? Now, what did I tell you about gaps? Now, when a gap is breached, it can act as what? An inverted gap. So, you can see as price breached this gap, you can see how price came back, tapped into it, and it was pushed higher, right? So, those are the as what? Inverted gaps. Look at another example here. We had about another favorite gap here between this candle's low and this, right? So let's look at this. Look at this tiny gap here. Can you see this? Market came in, pushed, and then was dropped. Although this is not correct, right? this is not a correct gap because candle one. I think that if you that you have to use the highest candle, right? This is candle one. It's higher than what this previous one, right? So this is the high. So this this gap is not correct. Why? Why? Because this can do not go below this low. You might have three must be below candle two. We have candle one, candle two, candle three. Candle one must be above candle two, and candle three must be below candle two. So candle three was not below candle two. This is, this is not what a valid fair value gap, right? It's not a valid fair value gap. Look at the value fair value gap here. So you can see what this was the bullish market. Can you see this between this candle and what this candle, right? Can you see how price what came back? It dropped into what? It dropped into this candle and then was you can see the push up. Right, look, at, look at another favorite gap here. See, so you can see that how price came into the gap and then was pushed above. Right, this is how family gaps operate. Very simple models. Right now, someone was asking me, sir, in cases where there are two family gaps, right? Like now, look at this example now. We have two gaps now. Someone was asking me, sir, I can see a gap here. Right, I can also see a gap here. Which one should I use? I can see three favorite gaps here. So I can see a gap here. I can see a gap here. I can see that. What? Which one do I use? Now, how do you use your favorite gap? Number one, the easiest way to use favorite gap is number one. You look at where price is going to. If price is very close to its targets, you can use can the first gap. But if the market is retracing, you simply do what you draw your range from swing high to swing low, right? And then you target the one that is what inside what. 50%. That means the one that is below 50%. That means look at this gap now. If you draw your swing at the swing goal, this is above 50%. So you can't use that one. This is above 50%. We can't use that one. So this one was what below 50%. So use the one that is what at discount. So I talked about discount and premiums. Use the gaps that are at discount or premiums, right? That's, that is how you use it. Right. So use the one at discount or what premium. That has you use your fair value gap, right? So use the one at discount or premiums, the one that are 50% and beyond. Right, so anyone that's fifty percent is good to use. Right, so your assignment for this is to do what to locate fair value gap for the what time frame. The one that we enter, I've showed you what higher time why. So use use lower time frame. Use the fifteen minute charts. So look at oh uh, fifteen minute charts of USD chef. So look at fair value gap on fifteen minute chart of USD chef. So look at fifteen minute chart of USD chef. And then locate what your fair value gaps. Look at this now. Can you see that currently in GPUSD, we are inside the fair value gap now? So price can reject from here. Right? It's very possible that price can reject from here. So, right. so you can see that we have a gap here, which has not been tapped into. We have another gap here. So you can see that GPUSD has every tendency to drop lower. Let us let us also draw our range. So from here to here, you can see that our gap is we still have gaps down here. Right. So let's see what GPUSD is going to do. Right. Let's see what's going to do. So for you, look at the um, fair value gaps of 15 minutes time frame and 
you know, sent to um, tag me on Twitter, right? So this is where we're going to be ending today's session. If you enjoyed this call, do want to like this video, drop a comment, and then I'll see you guys in um, tomorrow's teaching. Cheers and goodbye.